So here we have an example of the kind of problem that I was just referring to. Suppose that we have a rectangular plate measuring 2 meters by 4 meters, and it is submerged underwater at a depth of 9 meters. The plate is parallel to the surface of the water. Determine the hydrostatic force felt by the plate. So first thing we're, we will do is make a little tank full of water. By little, of course, I mean this tank is going to be utterly huge based on the dimensions that I've just given to you, but we'll make it work. So this plate is submerged under the water. Here's two meters by four meters. So two meters by four meters. And it is submerged at a depth of nine meters. So everything's not exactly the scale here, but we'll make it work. So we have all of this big old rectangular box full of water above the plate and below the surface of the water. Now, what, what I had mentioned in the previous video is that the force uh, felt by this is going to be rho g d a. What I'd like to do is just identify what each of these variables are. Rho is a constant. Rho is going to be a nice constant 1,000, uh, what did I say, kilograms per cubic meter. That sounds right. Uh, acceleration due to gravity is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. The depth that we have for the plate is going to be a total of 9 meters. And the cross-sectional area, in this case, is going to be a nice, consistent rectangle all the way down. And it's going to be the same as the shape of the rectangular plate all the way down. So that's going to be 2 meters times 4 meters. Now, if we do a quick dimensional analysis of this thing, when I multiply all of these things together, we are going to see kilograms per cubic meter times meter times meter times meter, which will simplify to just kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. That's a kilogram meter per second squared. That's exactly the definition of a newton. Or, or no way, kilogram meter per second squared. Yeah, that's a newton. Sorry, it's been a, it's been a while since I've had a newton, apparently. So we'll call this 9.8 meters per second squared times 1,000 meters per kilograms per cubic meter times meter per second squared. There we go. Uh, depth of 9 meters and a cross-sectional area of 2 meters by 4 meters. Now at this point, if you want to pull out a uh, calculator to help you out with your calculations, that's probably going to be a fine idea. So we'll take our 9.8, multiply it by 1,000. Multiply that by 9, multiply that by 2, and multiply that by 4. And hopefully this displays okay. Uh, we get a final result of 705,600. 705,600. Now again, when we multiplied everything together, we got a kilogram meter per second squared, which is the definition of a newton. Now, when the plate is all at the same depth, like we see here, this calculation isn't too bad. It doesn't even require any calculus. The complicated portion comes from the following. What if we change the orientation? Of the plate. And here's something that you'll see frequently. Submerge it vertically. So if you submerge the plate vertically, now different parts of the plate are going to be at different depths. That is to say, instead of this orientation, suppose that I submerged it in a way where the plate was, say, parallel to the front wall and did two meters like this and four meters like this, where different parts of the plate are now at different depths. Well, here's where we're going to see the calculus thing happen. What we do is uh, we're, we're going to model this with a bunch of little tiny rectangles that are all at, at uh, their own individual depths. We're going to turn that into a, um, well, then break it into n sub-intervals and then make an approximation on each sub-interval and then add them all up and then uh, take a limit as n goes to infinity as we frequently do. So I'm going to go ahead and break that down in the next video just to give you an idea of how this is going to change.